Hey guys, Space Guru 5 here, back again to do a commentary. In this commentary, we're going to be covering Smartass Burb. This person used to go by the username of Super Funny Bros, as he used to be a commentator within the commentary community with over 1,000 subscribers for taking his account down. He made a video on the 1st of October called I'm Gay and I'm Not Oppressed. But is he really? Huh. Strap yourselves in, folks, because we're about to find out. Note that Tom mentions that he will try to be as objective as he can. Well, <laughs> let's just see how objective he can really be. Before I start, I should say that I can't speak for every single gay person out there. I know a couple of friends who had difficulties coming out around parents who were religious as fuck. <laughs> gay people have it far better off now in the western world than they did before. Gay marriage was finally legalized nationwide two years ago. As an openly gay man myself, I can say this, my fellow faggots, the war is over. We won. While it's true that gay people are a bit more socially accepted nowadays than they were two decades ago, the fact remains that we still have a very long way to go. The issue of gay marriage was only one issue out of many that needed to be addressed. There's also remaining issues such as adoption rights, public services, and the denial of transgender people to join the military. That's just a few of the issues that still need to be addressed, by the way. I wouldn't say that the war is over, per se, and I wouldn't really even call it a war. That just dehumanizes the causes of gay rights by comparing societal turmoil with total carnage and destruction. Sure, it's been one hell of a struggle for you guys, but I wouldn't go out of my way to call it a war. That's just hyperbolic and ridiculous. And since we're talking about poor word choice, I also want to comment on your unironic usage of the word faggot. I get why people try to reclaim old slurs from bygone days, but that doesn't make any of those efforts any less tryhard or ridiculous. Just the mere idea of a group of people reclaiming a derogatory term as a means of sticking it to the detractors only rubs salt in an already open wound. If you really want this shit to stop, you should focus more on reconciliation than reparation. Otherwise, you're not any better than the people who oppress disenfranchised groups of people to begin with. Not to mention, there are still plenty of LGBT people who take great offense to the word faggot, so your usage of it like it's no big deal makes you look even more foolish and myopic. My advice? Just don't fucking use that word. Like, ever. When I say that the war is over, I don't mean it's over for the entire planet. There are still countries, mainly Islamic, that kill gay people, but instead of us ruthlessly fighting over the rights of gays in Middle Eastern and some African countries, we're acting like we're still oppressed here in the United States. Oh boy, that comment about Islamic. Well, that sure brings me joy to the world. Sure, you say, mainly Islamic, but that raises the issue called relative privation fallacy. For the uninformed, a relative privation fallacy is basically where you try to compare a current situation to, well, it's not as bad as this situation. So yeah. The situation in America is pretty bad, but it's nothing compared to all the killings that are going on in the Middle East. That's basically what this guy is doing. While it's true that plenty of discrimination occurs in the Middle East and the Islamic parts of Africa, to act like it's the only place where such discrimination occurs is blatantly Islamophobic. After all, statements like that unfairly generalize and marginalize a large sector of people who may not necessarily even agree with such a discrimination to begin with. Way to expose your bias, mister, I want to be as objective as possible. If you don't believe me when I say that he's Islamophobic, then explain this... ...and this. Yeah, I fucking thought so. Let's talk about the whole gay wedding cakes issue. Ah boy, here we go! When I was in college, I used to believe that private business owners shouldn't be able to deny gay people their services. But a year or so after I graduated, I now believe the opposite. Private business owners should have the freedom to associate and disassociate with anyone they choose. You know, except when it might be illegal via the Civil Rights Act, but alright. Let's go ahead and actually say, just for gay people from now on. Tom, are you absolutely kidding me? You were born as a gay person, and yet, who you are, basically saying that people have the right to discriminate against people because of something that they were born with. Is that understood? Am I getting you right now? 
Because that's basically what you were just saying, and I don't want to misinterpret you in any way, alright? But there's this entitlement mentality when it comes to shopping that happens to anyone, regardless of who they are. I am the customer. I'm the reason your business stays afloat. The customer is always right, which means I'm always right. So obey me. Private services are not a right. They're a privilege. Therefore, you do not have the right to gay wedding cakes from bakers who don't want to make it. Just like how you don't have the right to make bakers put homophobic words on a cake. You know, I thought that bakers were hired for the purpose of, you know, baking things. If you asked a baker to make a cake for your gay wedding and that baker refused, that would go against the whole purpose of their job and could effectively put them out of work. It's not so much of a case of entitlement as much as it is practicing good business. You're effectively setting forth a straw man to make it look like you have a point here. Sorry, but that kind of argumentation just doesn't fly in the real world. Also, if you favor privilege to utilize private businesses and facilities, then it doesn't look like you support any sort of equality at all. If such business practices were allowed to become rampant, then private business owners could just pick and choose which kinds of people to provide their services to. Such practices violate Section 2 of the 4th Article of the United States Constitution, which states that the citizens of each state shall be entitled to all the privileges and immunities of the citizens in the several states. Good luck operating a functioning business whose practices are unconstitutional. What if it was a straight couple being refused a cake by a gay baker? I bet you that the gay baker wouldn't get arrested for it because the couple was straight. Everyone must be treated equally under the law. You don't deserve more rights just because you suck dick. Because as we all know, only gay couples engage in oral sex. It's not like straight couples do it too. How very informed of you to generalize a sexual act to be performed within a specific sector of people despite the fact that literally anybody can do it. Did you even think this stuff through before you said it? Also, what do you mean by everyone must be treated equally under the law? Couldn't one argue that not everyone is being treated equally, even with the cisgendered straight white males here? There's still racism and sexism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, just about any phobia of different groups really. Even with the laws being in place, you can still look some of the stuff up on YouTube or even go outside to see this happening, god forbid. Even though the US is a better place, you're treating it like it's the best place to be at, when no, you're wrong. We can do so much better than we are doing right now. Before we continue, I just want to know this. Tom, what are you trying to get at with the whole analogy of a gay baker refusing to bake a cake for a straight couple? If you're insinuating that straight people don't deserve fair service, that just further proves your preference for discriminatory business practices. If you're insinuating that gay bakers don't have to make cakes for straight couples, that also just proves that you want businesses to be discriminatory. Your analogy was a bit too vague, almost like you just dropped that in there to give some flag to straight people for no other reason other than just because they're straight. Real subtle there, Tom. People can't refuse service to you without facing jail time, and yet you claim you're still oppressed. Well, if private businesses were free to deny service to anyone, wouldn't big corporations... You don't need anti-discrimination laws to criminally punish them because- My god, are you still TALKING As for the government, public utilities, and public services, however, they don't have the right to refuse service to anyone because they're all funded by taxes. Unlike a private business, we're required to pay the government and their public and social services regardless, unless the government defunds them. For example, the lady who refused to give marriage licenses to newlywed gay couples because of her religious beliefs was completely in the wrong. She was a government employee, therefore she has no right to refuse anyone regardless of her convictions. Wait a minute, so you say that government employees and public businesses shouldn't discriminate, yet you think that private businesses should be allowed to discriminate. What? You really don't make any sense here. Do you want fair business or do you not want fair business? Pick a side, goddammit. No need to be on the fence about this shit. And that concludes this lesson on the rights of business owners versus the rights of government employees when it comes to serving gay people. Like I said before, gay people are not oppressed. There is no systemic suppression that is keeping you from expressing yourselves. 
you have anti-discrimination laws that put you higher up than the rest. Can we just appreciate the fact that Tom didn't even look at the map to show off that some states as shown in gray don't even have discrimination laws at all in favor of LGBT people? Or at least I'm assuming that it is, seeing how there is no key to tell you which color is which and what it means. Maybe a Google image search can help me out here. So apparently, this is a map of LGBT and gender employment discrimination in the US, where the states in gray have no laws to protect any of those people. Huh. You'd think he'd have actually looked at his sources before using them. You have yearly, I think it's yearly, gay pride parades. You have Ellen the fucking generous, one of the biggest celebrities in America, an open lesbian whose talk show has been running for 14 years. Just because there have been advances in gay rights and there are gay celebrities in American media doesn't mean that gays aren't oppressed anymore. Like I said before, there are still plenty of hurdles that must be jumped over before gays can be truly considered equal to straights in the eyes of the law. Let's also not forget that court decisions can be overruled at any time within the legislative and judicial branches of government, so we can't even be completely 100% sure that these advances will be permanent. There's a possibility that some group of homophobic people could end up lobbying Congress to repeal those laws. Don't be myopic about shit like this just because you've succumbed to confirmation bias. I also have to point this out. Did you guys notice that he wasn't too sure about gay pride parades being annual? We have yearly... I think it's yearly. Gay pride parades. Despite the fact that they are annual, this just proves how haphazard this whole thing is, and it shows that he was too lazy to go back and do some extra research on what he was talking about before talking about it. It almost feels like he just did this out of a whim or on a dare rather than to contribute to serious discourse. How very discursive of you, Tom. By the way, according to Social Justice Warriors, <laughs> Why are you talking about SJWs? This is supposed to be about how gays aren't oppressed in America anymore. Why are you suddenly talking about how SJWs ruin everything? You know, just for that, I'm gonna skip ahead a bit. Fuck you. You know, it took a white guy getting murdered for allegedly being gay to make these anti-discrimination laws. And it only took one gay man ripping off everybody on GoFundMe and denying it to ruin another gay person's life. Whoops! <laughs> It took an elderly white woman to win a landmark Supreme Court decision that made the federal government recognize married gay couples so that marriage benefits aren't restricted to the state you were married in. And it took a white gay couple to win another landmark Supreme Court decision to finally make gay marriage legal nationwide once and for all. Even though the Supreme Court can overrule those decisions at any point in time should they choose to or be lobbied enough to, but let's just gloss over that for a second. These people want to demonize people like me for being white, and yet it was white people who gave the gay community of all races the right to marry and be free to express ourselves. Instead of making enemies within your own community, we should unite to fight the real enemy to gay rights, political Islam, aka Sharia law, in the Middle East. Yet again, Tom, you're showing your Islamophobic bias. You know, I always thought that the real problem that causes all discrimination is the fact that humans, all personality aside, are inherently bigoted. I always thought that addressing that fact and doing something to counteract it would solve most or all discrimination problems as a whole. Oh wait, nope, gotta feed that self serving bias against Muslims somehow. We gotta blame an entire religion just because some of its adherents marginalize people they don't like. It's not like the whole blame game caused most problems in history. Now, we gotta keep this as objective as possible by proposing unfair generalizations about an entire religion just because I disagree with it. Hell, maybe I could pull a 180 and deny my bias by arguing semantics if people disagree with me and then trying to get my dissenters to debate me in a Discord server. In fact, while I'm at it, why don't I whinge and whine about my critics to convince my friends on my Discord server to spam upvotes on my video to try and counteract the downvotes? And that couldn't possibly go wrong at all. I am gay, and I am not oppressed. Not because I'm white, but because American citizens view being gay as normal as being straight. When people don't care about your sexual orientation, it's actually the best thing. The reason these perpetually offended special snowflakes keep screaming that gay people are still oppressed is because they want to remain special. They want the attention and recognition of being gay because they have no other defining personality. And the only way to do it is to keep being victims. And the only way to be victims is to create a boogeyman, that being American culture. It's statements like this that just exacerbate the problems gays face in American society. Telling a whole group of marginalized people that they're not being oppressed and then going on to call them special snowflakes? 
which is something the right often uses to generalize the left, just further exemplifies their oppression. That's basically like doing the whole stop hitting yourself routine on the playground. Way to further dehumanize the cause of gay rights. You get a gold star. Also, didn't you say earlier that you know quite a few gay friends who feared being chastised for being gay? Is that roll the clip? I know a couple of friends who had difficulties coming out around parents who were religious as fuck. Shouldn't that in itself indicate that there's still a general stigma against gay people in American society? But yes, oppression doesn't exist in America anymore, despite all the news stories and all my personal friends telling me about all their horrible experiences about people hating gay people. How fucking myopic can you possibly be? I'm gay and I'm not oppressed. Fuck your propaganda. This has been the smartass burb flying over idiocy. Of all the fucking metaphors that could perfectly sum up this entire video. In summation, this whole video was a misinformed and disorganized mess disguising itself as a mature addition to a serious discussion. All it did was prove why gay people are continuing to struggle to this day, and it doesn't help at all to justify their cause. If anything, it only attempts to delegitimize an important cause that should be fought for. That's almost along the same level as just flat out saying that gay people don't exist. Considering that you are a gay man yourself, Tom, you should know better about this kind of thing. However, your myopic and misguided bias has clouded your reasoning skills, and it only proves to me that you don't have any fucking idea what you're talking about. Do us all a favor and actually do your research before making another video like this. That way, you won't end up misleading an impressionable audience with false information and blatant bigotry. As I've stated before, bigotry is the only real reason we have any kind of discrimination to begin with. We should teach people how to love, not how to hate. That's just fucking wrong, man. I know I've been harsh in this commentary, but it's only because I'm that passionate about social justice and egalitarianism. I want people to focus more on cooperation and reconciliation instead of reparation and discrimination. However, when you make something like this, that just breaks us up even more. Instead of focusing on coming together to reconcile our differences, you focus on instigating conflict and blaming the Muslims and SJWs for everything wrong with society. Instead of putting forth mature discourse about a very serious issue, you put forth a chaotic mess of nonsensical name calling that may as well have come from the average YouTube spam commenter. And instead of recognizing and admitting your own faults and trying to improve as a person, you get all defensive and victimize yourself for people disagree with you and rally up your cronies to try and fight your battles for you. How the fuck? Do you expect society to change for the better if you yourself don't want to change for the better? I suggest you take a nice long look at yourself and ask, is this really what I want to be? That's about it for today, folks. I'm Space Guru 5, and ladies and gentlemen, I'll see y'all later. Take care.